I Karen? think one of the, to go back to what the question to ask is, well, why in division does division sometimes not result in a smaller mm -hmm. answer mm -hmm. or multiplication mm -hmm. does not result in a larger answer? And if teachers consider that, and work through the process, they'll then get back to thinking about what Bertram referred to and the importance of the whole that you're considering when you are doing operations with fractions, when you're actually operating on them. And think about that in terms of what does that mean for student understanding? Because quite often in whole number computation, we give kids some ideas that turn out to be misconceptions as they begin to work with fractions. The division example. always makes smaller. Okay, okay, okay. And, and a great question that we, we ask uh, of kids, and kids need to ask of themselves as they're working through problems, does this make sense? Mm -hmm. uh, it, does this make sense? And it, it comes to the idea of estimating, you, know, you get an estimate of your answer, and you look at your answer and say, okay, does that make, does it make sense? And, and, and as students move through the, the, the grade levels and they get to more abstract levels, does this make sense is a, is a, is a great question to, to ask. Let me go to one more question here. Um, we, we got a question from Dearborn Heights, Michigan. What can teachers at the middle school level do to increase understanding of math concepts like fractions when most students come to us with little mastery of basic facts and even less number sense? I'm going to ask one of you to, uh, to address that um, comments. I think that some of the things that teachers can do is go back to Wu's model and use that idea of number line and use it from a sense of putting it in context of measurement so that students are doing a lot of linear measurement as well as other types of measurement to actually see where the numbers live, where the fractions live and how they live amongst the whole numbers and actually get to a point where they are doing many measurements, do it in a context of a problem so they are thinking about what the problem is saying, not just what the equation might be saying or the expression. But Karen, you know as well as I do, kids at the middle school level are not going to go back to hands-on activities. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's, there's a stigma that may be attached to going back to, I did that in the first grade, second grade, mm -hmm. going back to hands-on models. So at the, the upper levels, it, it's difficult for kids to, to go back and look at that, that hands-on model to develop some of those understandings. So as teachers, I think we have to help students to understand that this is something that needs, needs to be done. To and that's build why that I foundation. think that measurement is a great way in because people mm -hmm. measure throughout their lives and there's always applications mm -hmm. that you can mm -hmm. make, whether you're measuring the top of the table to see if you can mm -hmm. buy a tablecloth that fits or, or measuring how long a table you need for so many people to have as a place setting or measuring to build many different situations. Yeah, yeah you, could, you could argue that, I mean, this is, first of all, I, I speak to far too many teachers who teach this thing called algebra, who, who, who are at the same spot, who are saying, my kids don't know fractions, what do you expect me to do here, and so forth and so on. So we, we are now talking about a pre-adolescent child who, is, as Bertram said, they, you're not going to drag out the, the blocks uh, for, for this kid or these kids. And so they, they need to see it in a context. This is a perfect time, in my opinion, for ratio and proportion to come in, whether it's looking at how your, how your cell phone uh, charges are going to change or whether or not you can afford that additional card for a, another hit of iTunes or whatever. There are ways to sort of show how this math comes comes to fruition. And there are also ways to model it. I mean, whether it's using 100 grids to represent percents and comparing those amounts or, or looking at different proportions using some visual model, I think, I think it makes a lot of sense to do that. Uh, but from the perspective of that classroom teacher, and whoever that person is, it's not, it's not one teacher, it's a whole lot of them who wish their kids had, had better access to and, 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 if you will, quick retrieval of basic multiplication facts of, of real proficiency and the whole number stuff, which slows up the kind of, 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 of work that we're talking about here. This is a real issue in schools around the country, and, and what we're trying to say is they still must have an understanding of that of those procedures mm -hmm. in terms of why it makes any sense and how, how they work. It's just, it's very, uh, very much a building block. Great. Thanks, Skip, and all three of you, thank you. Um, we have one last brief pre-taped segment focusing on this decimals fractions issue. UGA's Denise Mewborn and Patty Huberty from Colbert Elementary School can explain it far better than I can. When I can use money 
to, to bridge the two, then we can start saying, all right, here's a fraction name. What's the decimal name that would go along with it? And I start with the easy ones, like the child actually, Nicole said today, a quarter. There was a situation where we were talking about the fraction in halves, and we were between four and five, and we were at four, and then four and a half, and then five, and then I made the mark for the fourths. And she immediately said that was a quarter, and another child said a fourth. I think often the way we teach decimals and fractions gives children the impression that they're two entirely separate things. We teach chapters on fractions, and we often connect decimals to whole numbers because decimal computation behaves similarly to whole number computation. So we tend to link decimals with whole numbers, and then fractions are taught by themselves. And so I think it's critically important to link fractions with decimals so that students understand that 3 fourths and 0.75 are exactly the same number. They're just represented differently. It's no different than in some contexts my title is daughter and in other contexts my title is wife and in another context it might be professor. That quantity that's 3 fourths sometimes gets called 3 fourths and sometimes it gets called 75 hundredths and sometimes it gets called 0.75 sometimes it gets called 75 percent and for children to understand that these are numbers we're talking about and that that lives in that very same spot on the number line all the time you can just call it different things and that we call it different things in different contexts depending on how it's most useful to us to work with that number I think it's very common in countries that use the metric system that children work very fluently with decimals they don't do a lot with fractions if they are faced with fractions they convert it to a decimal almost always to work with it. Because we still have the English system of measurement here and we don't use the metric system largely in the real world here outside of the business world, um, I think our students aren't very fluent with decimals and they don't see decimals and fractions as the same thing.